What's up, this is Dr. Taylor Crick at the Washington Wellness Center. In today's video, I just want to touch on mold toxicity. That's something that we've been dealing with a lot lately, learning a lot about, and it's crazy. I, and I've known a lot and worked with mold for a long time, but you know, it wasn't very prevalent in, in Salt Lake because it's more of a desert, dry, not everybody's basements have flooded. Here in Illinois, there's like very rarely does anybody come through my practice that hasn't seen mold in their house or doesn't know that they've had an exposure. And it's crazy when you dig into the scientific literature about what problems mold can cause. And that's the purpose of today's video is to just look through from the literature what are some of the symptoms. Because some of the most common symptoms are sinus infections, asthma, breathing problems. And those are the ones that, that most people think of, but a lot of times you don't have to have those at all. And some of, uh, hopefully this, this presentation today just opens up your eyes about some of the crazy things that mold can cause. I'll, I'll tell you, one of the things that motivated me to do this is I was dealing with a patient who's uh, severely uh, neurotoxic, let's say, and we know he has heavy metals, he's done testing and et cetera, but I, I said something like, hey, have you ever been exposed to mold? Like this, this kind of sounds like mold. He said, I think this is bigger than mold. I said, well, if you think this is bigger than mold, then you don't know much about mold um, because it's crazy 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 so let's just let's just dive into it what are the things that mold toxicity could could be so first off here's something called uh um, symptom clusters and these are just i'm just showing you these as an example i don't know why they're blurry um but these are different symptom clusters and they're clustered for a very specific reason we're not going to get into it but the long story of it is there's 13 of these clusters and if you check off eight of these boxes, if you have symptoms in eight of these boxes, then there's a chance that you have mold toxicity. And there's other diagnostic testing, of course, but here are some of the symptoms that are not uncommon. So fatigue is in a box of its own. Most people with mold present with fatigue. The next box, weakness, decreased assimilation of new knowledge, aches, headache, light sensitivity. Um, Next box, memory impairment, decreased word finding, difficulty concentrating, joint pain, morning stiffness, cramping, unusual skin sensitivity, tingling, um, shortness of breath, sinus congestion, cough, excessive thirst, confusion, appetite swings, difficulty regulating body temperature. I'd say that, you know, I'm just reading these now, so I'm not trying to add anything to this, but also difficulty regulating blood pressure and different autonomic dysfunctions, um, increased urinary frequency, uh, red eyes, blurred vision, night sweats, mood swings, ice pick pain, which is exactly like it sounds like, somebody's stabbing you with an ice pick, uh, stomach pains, diarrhea, numbness, Tearing of the eyes, disorientation, a metallic taste in the morning or in your mouth in the morning, uh, especially in the morning, static shocks and vertigo. That is not all of the symptoms by any means. This is just something that Dr. Shoemaker has discovered in working with thousands of people that he often finds these symptoms cluster together, and it's they're interesting. Like why is appetite swings in with increased urinary frequency, and why is difficulty concentrating? not in with disorientation, you know, so it's just interesting the different colors and the different clusters here, but those are some of the things. I'd say that other ones that aren't on here that we've just even seen in the office lately, like hair loss, um, um, heart palpitations, and, you know, we looked them up with Google, like heart palpitations and mold, and it's one of the top things. Um, the hair loss, too, we Googled it, thought, oh, I wonder if those could be associated, and it's one of the top things. Here's a quote from a paper um, about mold, and it says, although respiratory symptoms are common from exposure to water-damaged indoor environments, it is important to note that a typical patient presents with multiple symptoms which are often debilitating, including fatigue, neurocognitive symptoms, myalgia, which is muscle pain, arthralgia, which is joint pain, headache, insomnia, dizziness, anxiety, depression, irritability, GI problems, tremors, 
balance disturbance, heart palpitations, vasculitis, angioedema, autonomic nervous system dysfunction. And autonomic nervous system dysfunction, one of the things that that can mean is that your body being stuck in fight or flight mode, your body being stuck in the stress response and not being able to switch back and forth from that gas pedal to that brake pedal um, and being able to effectively go back and forth and then regulating things like blood pressure and heart rate um, are autonomic functions, body temperature as well. So the development of new onset chemical sensitivity is also commonly seen after exposure and can have a severe impact on a person's life. So that's multiple chemical sensitivity. That's a common um, down the road um, presentation of mold. It's like, you know, the first time you're exposed to mold, you don't get multiple chemical sensitivity, but then down the road, you start to realize, you know, you can't, one of the things that I ask my patients all the time, how would you feel if I locked you in bed, bath and beyond? And some people are like, don't, you know, and you, you, they get anxiety, they get uh, racing heart, they get uh, brain fog, they get symptoms around chemicals. They might get symptoms in their hair, their, their hair salon when they're getting their hair done. They might get symptoms around a candle. They might get symptoms if they're in an elevator with somebody with too strong of perfume or cologne. They have multiple chemical sensitivity. This one says types of disorders that can be seen resulting from water damage environments, mold, mycotoxins, and bacteria include infections and mycoses, chronic and fungal rhinositisitis, so stuffy nose, stuffy sinuses, um, allergies, asthma, hypersensitivity reactions, inflammatory lung issues, immune suppression, and modulation, autoimmune diseases, so mold exposure is associated with autoimmune diseases, especially systemic uh, ANA type autoimmune diseases, mitochondrial toxicity, really bad, carcinogenicity, that's cancer, uh, renal toxicity, neurotoxicity, killing brain cells, and DNA adducts to nuclear and mitochondrial DNA causing mutations. That's not good. This becomes significant as it directs the approach to treatment, which focuses on removing ongoing sources of oxidative stress in the body, such as mycotoxins, as well as instituting treatments which focus on countering oxidative stress, such as glutathione and other antioxidants. Inflammation triggered by exposure also appears to play a significant role in illness during and after exposure to water damaged buildings. And inflammation, of course, is a huge part of this. In fact, mold toxicity is diagnosed as SIRS, which is C-I-R-S, chronic inflammatory response syndrome. So the mold sets your body into this in inflammatory cascade that affects things in the brain that then go to trigger things like the adrenals and things like the gut. And, and you know, it's a systemic issue, but it's all inflammation mediated or immune mediated. So crazy that all these things are in the literature that mold can do these things. Here's neuropsychiatric effects from mold exposure in adults. Individuals exposed to mold report an extensive range of symptoms, including malaise, fatigue, and cognitive impairment, which appear to be related to the duration of exposure. Meaning if you're in a moldy hotel for the weekend, probably not gonna have you know, long-term depression and fatigue, but if you are in a moldy home for 10 years, you probably are. The longer the duration, the worse. In one study, patients who had been exposed to mold were impaired on a variety of cognitive measures, including verbal learning, visual spatial learning, and memory, psychomotor speed, and emotional function. Um, in other studies, they displayed similar symptoms, including an inability to stand on their toes, inability to walk in a straight line with their eyes closed, um, so some coordination issues, short-term memory loss, as well as color discrimination and reaction time, so it's impacting their brains. Same paper, um, patients reported mostly depression, while actual brain scans by an EEG showed hypo activation, decreased activation in the frontal cortex, which could be potentially due to blah, blah, blah. It's similar to those seen in traumatic, mild traumatic brain injury, where they had uh, impaired function when compared to how smart they were 
before their head trauma. So when they compare them to pre-morbid estimates of intelligence, they've actually gone down. And there are some other studies, I think, that look at IQ and show that that's gone down too. This showed that they had decreased cognitive function in multiple domains with memory and executive functions being the most commonly affected areas. A mold patient told me recently, she said, oh man, I hate choices. If I have choices, especially with you know, cost of like, oh, this is cost this and this cost this and I have to make that choice, it is really, really hard for me to make those decisions and I got to go home and, and think about that. Um, these symptoms were similar to those in matched groups of mild traumatic brain injury and people with moderate traumatic brain injury as well. Um, so that's in one study confirmed that this uh, was associated with multi-system issues involving the nervous and immune systems. There's actually a lot of studies showing that. Um, this is, I think, a different paper. Dampness and mold hypersensitivity syndrome patients have increased morbidity rate due to respiratory tract infections. So you get recurrent sinus infections, you get recurrent upper respiratory infections, and you have to look to mold for a cause. Um, sinusitis, bronchitis, even pneumonias, when the exposure to the moldy environment continues. I just heard of somebody who had moved into a new home, I don't know if it was new, it was new to them, in the summer, fine, enjoyed it. When the heat turned on, when the HVAC turned on, the heat turned on in the fall, she got pneumonia and kept having pneumonia and kept having pneumonia and it wouldn't go away. And she, they, they in their HVAC repair, they found a bunch of mold. And she also knows that she has a penicillin allergy and penicillium is, is a, a type of mold. That's one of the most common types of mold. So it could be triggering her immune response. I don't know, she's not a patient. I just heard this story. Um, but especially those upper respiratory reactivation of things like cold sores or genital herpes, um, recurrent UTIs. We got a lot of people with that. A lot of people get that recurrent UTIs or skin infections. You know, like why does my skin keep getting infected? Interesting. Patients may also experience episodes of mild prolonged fever and fatigue, and a minority of them may develop the so-called chronic fatigue syndrome. Patients may also complain of muscle and joint pain resembling fibromyalgia. Furthermore, some other rheumatic manifestations have rarely been described in, in patients with, this is not CIRS, this is damp, mold, damp, moldy hypersensitivity syndrome. Um, some patients develop central nervous system symptoms that are often called brain fog. So that's everybody that I see. It's like, gosh, I've got fatigue, I've got brain fog, I've got these recurrent infections, I've got this autoimmune diagnosis. What do you think it could be? And it's like, man, we need to rule mold out. Um, but it's also, it is kind of a diagnosis of exclusion of we talk about the history and we talk about, I had a phone call with somebody the other night and her they sent a short symptom survey to me. And based on those symptoms, I showed it to my staff and we said, what does this sound like to you? We said, boy, this sounds like mold. We get on the phone and we're talking and she says, you know, blah, blah, blah. This started a few years ago. And then we moved into my in-law's basement for a year and a half. And my brain is just going ding, 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 ding. Um, so the history tells us a ton about this. These patients have impaired cognition, inability to concentrate, and problems with both short and long-term memories. Occasional headaches and dizziness um, are common in brain fog, and there also might be peripheral neurological manifestations, such as pains that move around or come and go, and, and or numbness in the legs and the arms are commonly are reported. So here are a couple of the uh, citations. Um, one is uh, from Jeanette Hope, it's from the Scientific World Journal. The other one's from Frontiers in Immunology, August of 2017, Clinical Diagnosis of Dampness and Mold Hypersensitivity Syndrome, Review of the Literature. Um, and, you know, we have, I, we now have dozens of, dozens, probably more, of papers that we've accumulated uh, on mold 
and we only keep the good ones. But if anybody wants to know more info on this, the crazy thing to me is the more that I look through the medical literature on this, it's out there. The World Health Organization, the CDC, I mean, the governing bodies recognize that this is a problem. It's a problem internationally. It's a huge problem in the agriculture world because of the mold that grows on feed. There's a ton, a ton, a ton of valid research out there. It's just a really, really hard thing for somebody to be sitting at home thinking, gosh, I can't get out of bed. I can't think straight. I have this brain fog. I have this fatigue. I have these joint pains. What could it be? They're often not thinking mold. And once again, that's why I made this presentation. Because if you're having those symptoms, you need to be thinking mold or you need to be going back through your history. I'll tell you the same guy who said, I think this is bigger than mold. As we were going through his history and talking, he said, oh man, I just ripped up this floor that had three layers of old carpet underneath it. And it was like wet and it was covered with mold. And he was telling me about it. He's like, ah, I probably shouldn't have done that, should I? <laughs> uh, but it doesn't matter. Now we need to get rid of it and we need to support his body's detox pathways. And you find it, you fix it or remediate it, and then you restore the body to function. That is our goal. And so if you're having any of these weird symptoms, don't downplay the mold part uh, because it could be a very, very, very important piece of your health puzzle.